Hi, we're here with um, independent UI designer Joe Noxar and also former Java Fossey member. Thanks yeah. for joining us today, Joe. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. And um, as a specialist in UI, obviously you kind of you go around. You're most notably known for your work on the Tesla UI interface. Yeah, Am I correct? that was a big one. That's I'm very very proud of that one for sure. Uh, basically, was the lead UX designer for the Tesla Model S touchscreen, the big 17-inch touchscreen in the car, and the mobile application. So that was that was fun. And all developed in Linux. Yeah, so it's it's actually a custom stack. So it's uh, it's running on uh, Nvidia Tegra processors. There's a couple of them in the car, uh, but it's Linux with a Qt toolkit. And uh, a lot of custom code. Though, I should be clear, I'm a designer. I didn't write any of the code. Literally zero lines of code written by me. You just made the code human. Uh, I, I came up with how it should work and how a person would interact with the different systems in a car. And uh, really skilled engineers and visual designers made it really beautiful and made it work really nicely. So. And that's kind of what you've been speaking about DevOps this week as well, right? Yeah, um, kind of last minute because I was here. I'm here to do a, a little deal with the Java Posse. It's a, I'm a former member, but they wanted me out here for a special episode today, um, or tomorrow evening, I should say. Um, but last night at the speaker dinner, uh, Stefan popped in and asked me, "Hey, we had a guy who couldn't make his flight. Do you oh. mind doing a talk about well, Tesla?" Thanks very much for stepping in. <laughs> yeah, no problem. It's fun. It's fun for me to do. So yeah, I'm happy to do it. And um, what are kind of the main takeaways from your talk today? Obviously, a lot of people here are developers, but it's always interesting for developers to hear from a design point of view. Right. It, it, you know, it's funny. I've done several talks at DevOx in the past just about like how engineers should think about design, um, some pitfalls of design. But this talk today specifically is about the design of the Tesla Model S touchscreen. So it'll be less about... Uh, you know what you can do, and more just here's the process we went through uh, when we were designing that touchscreen. What were the most challenging aspects of this development process for you? Um, I guess the tough one is in in the car in a Model S. There's no uh, there's no buttons, there's no knobs or anything, so it's all a touchscreen. All going to be there. Touchscreen, and you're driving. Yeah, the, the the driver actually manipulates this thing while they're going. Um, so we had to balance the. Uh, complexity and the amount of time it takes for you to look at something and understand what it is uh, with the fact that you need to be looking out the window paying attention to the road. So the, the large screen uh, gave us a lot of real estate to make things big and obvious, but we paid a lot of attention to layout of things. So it was there wasn't a lot of cognitive load um, when you're looking at stuff to figure it out. So it was, it was just a challenge. It was something that hadn't been done. And now uh, you'll see a lot of different car companies going in that direction. So to it's try kind to of make you set a precedent with this then? Uh, we love to think so. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's it sort of, a lot of stuff has come. In fact, there was a DevOps talk today um, at the opening keynote where the Java FX guys, uh, they told me they used the Model S as inspiration for their uh, design of their sample for Java FX. They're in car. Wow, in so you've got actual fans here at DevOps. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> I hope so. There should be lots of fans of Tesla, but. Obviously, as someone with a lot of kind of UI experience, you must look around when you're kind of looking at kind of products and things and just see a lot of really things that really upset you. <laughs> so true. It, it is a difficult world to live in as a, as a UI designer. Um, it's personal pain. <laughs> oh, yeah, it really is. There's, there is, everything has software. Everybody uses software, you know, everybody's mobile device and anything you interact with anywhere usually has some sort of UI. UI. Um, many times it's horrible. Um, there's a few times it's wonderful, but other times it's just. What really upsets you when you're kind of. Uh, I hate using terms like this, but things that just weren't well thought out. Like, they could have made this very simple had they spent a little bit more time thinking about the user's experience, but they just wanted to get it done. So thinking kind of more in terms of making it work as opposed to how it feels when it works. Exactly. So it's, and I'm very sensitive to it. I also notice like when something's one or two pixels off, 
so I'm very sensitive to the you know, that's, that's from being at Apple, the, the, the extreme details of UI, but also the, the overall user experience. So it's it's really rough. So your take home <laughs> would be for app developers: plan, plan, and think about pixels. Make, make people look. Show your yeah. friends at Apple. Right. Well, there's a bunch. I've actually done. If you go into Parlays uh, into prior years, I've done some talks on tips for engineers that, with design. I've also done. Uh, sort of a, a rule book, a bunch of golden eggs for good UX. Huh? Um, so there's stuff you can dig into and watch on Parlays right now. I'm not sure how many years ago it was. It was a couple years ago. Still relevant though, I suppose. Yeah, oh, Design de principles. definitely still relevant. I guess the, the biggest one, if you had to steal a takeaway, is oftentimes software engineers will be responsible for the UI themselves. And their mind is wrapped around the data structure that right. stores the stuff. It's you know? a whole new way of thinking, isn't it? You're kind of you don't really care when you're at the back end. It's right. Kind of but they're tasked with doing the UI. So it's very evident when that happens because the you'll see the data structure just by using the UI you can see what data structure the engineer has set up to store that. And that's sort of the number one rule of, of good UI is to not directly reflect the data structure in the UI. You have to consider the uses the user's use cases and how they're gonna use the thing, totally separate from the way you're gonna organize and structure your so data. So it's almost start from scratch. Don't just develop it and then well, be very focused on keeping your data structures uh, as efficient and granular as you need them to be. But the when it comes to the user interface, you need to put that aside and think of what do they need to get done and how do they use it. And then the, the fun part of the code, if you will, is to connect those two. So the UI is something very simple. And then behind the scenes, it's as complex as it needs to be. And that, they should not reflect each other. They, sh they should work very seamlessly, but you shouldn't see the data structure just by using the UI. Great, thank That's you. That's number one rule. <laughs> Important things to remember. <laughs> sure. Thank you very much for chatting with us today. You're welcome. It was great to be here, and uh, I'm looking forward for the rest of the week. Fantastic. So we'll see you around the conference. Yeah, definitely. Thank you.